so um right it's when you think of the ability to create this prompt you know this image with this insane detail that would normally be like impossible and it's creating this in a couple of seconds you know the lighting is phenomenal the textures on the robes the like you know the wizard's like beard um all of this to photoshop it would be just impossible right to to create it, it would be super super intensive and mid journey is really making it uh a lot easier to do uh i'm writing a book on chat gpt i post regularly on linkedin and i'm always looking for chances to talk with people about this because you know it's so it, it's such an amazing space to be in and i know there's a lot of people out there that are really interested in it so i um consider myself an ai jockey and what that means is right you have this incredibly powerful ai that you're going to try to ride for the win and you're a team the ai will get you part of the way there but you have to guide it it's a genius painter and photographer <laughs> like this painting style right this is this is crazy like it's gorgeous and it would have taken them you know an artist a month to make this or so but it's because of the the miracle of natural language processing you can use just planning you know words to make this stuff pop up but a, another key thing with you know being an ai jockey is knowing when not to use the ai and being able to spot the mistakes that it's making that are <laughs> there's plenty of them right but we'll get into how to address some of those does anybody want to tell me how you're using uh, we've talked a little bit about how some of the people here are using ai uh, mid journey in specific does anybody else got any thing they want to throw in like how they're using ai are you using it for thumbnails are you you know for your posts are you are you using it for pre visualization or to communicate with artists or I'll share. I, um, I'm not using it yet. I am super curious. And the, the, the curiosity, at least right front of mind is how to use this in creating like logos or, you know, uh, photography or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like photos to use on a website. So I'm, um, that complement the brand and complement the logo. So I'm just all, yeah. I'm a sponge. <laughs> Great. Anybody else? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, well, as I, as I said previously, I uh, have experience using the journey for uh, creating illustrations to my ideas for my presentations when I was publicly speaking. And yeah. also I studied, uh, teach my son to use this, uh, the journey to create illustrations to his uh, also, uh, you know, anime style uh, short stories. He mm. tries to use that at the time. Yeah, uh really quick on that one. You made you reminded me of something. Um, you know, there's there's a question of consistency, like how do you get the same character to show up in different things? Um, and then there's also just, you know, this is a creative revolution that is occurring, that it is huge in the sense that, you know, you you can make comic books or children's books or whatever you want with this, you know, tool set. And um, we'll try to get into a little bit more about that consistency stuff. And, you know, we're going to, it's just going to democratize and empower creativity. So uh, one of the things that's really important and valuable is knowing um knowing about art and knowing you know famous artists 
really studying art because that's going to help you get the styles that you want out of this. You know, like this kind of painting style, for example, is, uh, you know, the result of a specific prompt, as are all of them. And one of the things that you're going to want to do if you haven't already done it is access Discord. Uh, Discord is where um, all of this is happening. So let me just quick mention a couple of others. Uh, other image generators, Dolly, Stable Diffusion, Leonardo. These are tools that are, um, some of them are free. Uh, there's You can use MidJourney to a certain extent um, in the free version, but you know for eight bucks a month to be able to generate as much as you want, it's pretty sweet. Uh, let me just go... I want to introduce you really quickly to Discord because it might freak you out a little bit if you're not if you're not a techie, but it's really insanely powerful and you're seeing a lot of capabilities coming out of it. So it's worth downloading. It's a free download. You can use it in your browser. Um, but this is what Discord looks like. And it's like a super uber chat tool. Whoops, let me bring that back up. It's just, it does video, it does text. It sets up a what's called a, a server. Um, so you have your own like private workspace basically. And we'll get into that <laughs> maybe a little bit more. Um, anybody else using Discord yet? Are you familiar with it? Yeah, in a little bit? Okay. Um, so what happens, for example, with MidJourney is you set up your Discord server and then you invite, you do what's called inviting MidJourney, the MidJourney bot to your server, and then you can create all your stuff in private. Because when you're creating this in MidJourney, it is shared with the rest of the world. All this, this imagery, none of it is copyrightable. Um, yet, but I think, you know, you're going to see people like uh, companies like Adobe are really back in, getting into this to try to make it copyrightable and they're guaranteeing that your, your images will be copyrightable. And I think that they're going to, you know, you're going to see a lot more happening there in the legal space. So Philip says, I use discord. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, he's going to have to bail at 1115, but I'm glad you showed up. Okay, the uh, the reason why you're going to want to use Discord is it's going to give you a dish, the access to a bunch of functionality that I'll get into in a moment. But you know some of some of the mid journey uses that I'm using, right? Practical uses for eye catching visuals. <laughs> And just playing around, you know, we learn best when we when we play and we start to see the the limits and the boundaries of, you know, what this system is capable of. And one of the things that got me excited, you know, there's one of the, the, the most practical use cases for this tool is model photography. And when you create a model, you know, great, here it is. Um, but say I don't, you know, this guy, by the way, none of this exists anywhere, period. This is a one of a kind, unique image that will never be generated again, um, just because of the way that the, the system works. And But say I wanted to have, you know, somebody else's face in here, like my own. <laughs> um, you can do face swapping and normally, you know, like I use Photoshop at a pretty expert level, do this <laughs> would take a lot of time and it's doing it in seconds. And I'll, I'll definitely talk more about that. Some other benefits of mid journey, you can use it to do rapid iterations on ideas and concepts. Uh, there's, wow, it really, it, it goes super fast. 
Let me, though, just quick address a couple of uh, some of the limitations first. Uh, anybody spot anything weird here? So this, let me just give you, tell you what the prompt was. The prompt was the ultimate cheeseburger. And you can notice there's some weird things going on here, right? Does anybody want to call anything out that they see that doesn't make sense? I would say the sesame seeds on the burger. Mm-hmm. What else? See, this is fun. This is like one of those um, one of those things I used to do. And there's this magazine called Highlights that we had as kids back in the day. And you would try to spot, you know, these inconsistencies and in images. Here's a good one. Ultimate cheeseburger. Why are the pickles underneath the burger? Like nobody <laughs> nobody puts pickles under the bottom on the bottom of it right um let's see i'm i'm sorry i'm going to say if it's the ultimate cheeseburger it would have bacon on it there's no bacon there um <laughs> this is that's kind of weird for a guy who is a vegetarian for 25 years to say but it's important okay um here's another one like it does it has issues with fingers, but a lot of times it'll do six fingers or four fingers. It can't do text, so it won't put your text. Currently, it won't put text into your image, um, which is a big limitation. There's other things that are really important for you as the artist to kind of be aware of that don't make sense. For example, in this bullfighting image, where's this cape? He doesn't have a cape and the bull only has three legs, right? Here, the bull, one horn is down and one is up, which makes no sense. Uh, you can't really see it, but this is like a, for some reason, it put like two or three bulls together and it has like 10, le eight or 10 legs or something, which makes no sense. And here, the bull... There's a guy riding the bull, kind of, sort of, which you don't do when you're bullfighting, right? Like, it just doesn't make sense. So, by the way, if I forget to come back to something, just remind me. It's cool. Uh, one of the new features that we're, we're seeing to get around that, like the five-finger issue, for example, it's, it's called in-painting. And I'll show you an example of that in a moment. Uh, in painting lets you uh, remove blemishes like this right here, right? So I did a mid-journey prompt, which was uh, brick wall unsplash. And the reason why I said unsplash is unsplash, it, it's a stock photography site that's well known for um, a certain visual style it uses it'll make textures for example um let's see i wanted i here i said a brick wall unsplash ar 16 by 9 so that's the aspect ratio you can't really s see that i don't think but it's one of the many commands you can use to get a different aspect ratio of your image. And 16 by 9 is more of a film kind of wider image. Usually it just creates a, a square. But because I said, you know, a brick wall unsplash, it made me like a basic brick wall. And the reason why I did that is I want to now go in here and I'm going to say vary by re region. And when you do that, you can select an area and let's just select here because that's where we, we want it to paint. And does anybody have anything cool that would be look good on a, <laughs> as a piece of graffiti on a brick wall? Let's Anything. put Madonna, anyway, Madonna image. 
Madonna image. Uh, okay, let's see what happens. So it'll take a second to get us the uh, four possibilities. And uh, let me see if I'll... By the way, does it realize which Madonna are we speaking of? I mean, the person or, you know, real <laughs> Madonna? Yeah, right? Like maybe you have to go Virgin Mary. So in this case, it put Madonna, the singer. That's that's kind of the weight, the weighted image, right? So it put Madonna, um, which, by the way, eh. <laughs> it. I'm going to say kind of got her face, but kind of didn't, right? Um, so let me let me just pop back to this other one because I like this image better. If you notice this image, it really integrated it into the bricks, right? And it looks like, um, oh, that's what I didn't do. Sorry. Let me let me go back. Let me go back to this image. And I'm going to redo the prompt. I'm going to say graffiti of graffiti of Madonna, or let's go the Virgin Mary of, or how about the Virgin of Guadalupe? Because that's a pretty um, well-known one. And I think it would actually understand if I misspelled graffiti, but let's let's go for this. Okay. One of the key things, right, is this is this system is very literal. So sometimes you have to like, right, Madonna might be the system's probably it's too heavily weighted towards that Madonna. So by going with the Virgin of Guadalupe, hopefully we'll get a little bit better result here. And that's pretty good. Uh, this one, I mean, for some reason, I don't know if you can see them. They look a little bit. Mm, it's not the Virgin of Guadalupe, which is a diff totally different style usually. But let's just blow one of these up. It kind of has almost like an um, an Indian or Hindu kind of look on this particular version. So, but you can see, right, it it integrated this into the brick wall. Looks really good. Um, as it looks like it's spray painted. So in this particular instance, what I did is I is I, you know, gave the prompt. And I loved this image, right? It got like amazing detail and the spray got the spray painting and everything all good. But for some reason, it put an apple on her cheek. I had no clue why, but I used in painting and I typed in, I just typed in uh, her cheek. And, uh-oh, mm, I didn't get the right image. Let me quick see if I can find that. Uh, I'm just gonna say, <laughs> uh, here we go, okay. And it completely removed it. Uh, it completely removed it. And it looks great. So it's now, right, a usable image. And if you get the five fingers, you know, you could select the area of your hands and you could say hands and give it a shot. And some, you know, maybe it'll get some of them wrong, but one of the images will probably be right. And then you would up res that. So it, what's nice about this is it's using the same base image over and over again. Uh, I made a this image, and for some reason it put this extra junk around here. So I selected it using in painting, and I just said background. And it took a little bit of work. It had a few of them that were wrong, but it, it did get at least one right. And it looks really good. So uh, let me just show you that real quick as well. On the in painting, 
You can also use this little lasso right here to select an, a region like and put something in there. I'm going to skip that since we're kind of limited on time today. But let's just say it, there's there's tools that are coming into the system that are going to make it easier to fix up some of the and tweak your images, get better results. Any questions? Yeah, Donovan. Yeah, the brief question. So after you use the lasso, you type a new prompt to correct the picture, like add fingers or remove fingers, or is that you mentioned the background? Have you mentioned you know the verb background? What clean background, clear background? Or I just said background, and I would just say hands. I wouldn't even tell. You don't really tell it to fix the hands because it doesn't understand what that means. It doesn't get that. But by saying hands, that's enough, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I said cheek, it, it gets it. Like, um, which is interesting. <laughs> uh, okay. So one of the things that you can do, and I'm not going to be able to probably get into today. You can start with a reference image. So you could, you can upload a reference image of your choosing and use that as the, it's called the seed to make a new image. So if you find something you like, it's, it's going to change it substantially. There's some tweaking that has to occur, but you can use that as that base image to create other images and you just upload a regular photo to do that. And I might come back to this and show you how to do that. In the, but in the meantime, let me just say what I did here, right? Cause I'm, I love Petra. Petra is an amazing city that's in Jordan made out of rocks and sand. And I said, you know, sand painting of a city in the desert or something like that. And it will make the whole image out of sand. I should show you some of these. Um, let me see if I have that one up. So these are some of the other images that it made, right? One of the things it does that it's really great at is this super hyper detail, right? Like the crazy sand lines and stuff like that. Um, it put in a beautiful painted kind of painterly sky. I have no idea what this is. So you could now use in painting to fix that, but you know, that it was making really like stunning images out of, <laughs> by just telling it, you know, what material you wanted it to make. I mean, to use in making this. And materials, you know, are a really good prompt. Um, I don't know if I'm going to, let me just quick, I'll come back to this in a second because I'm going to talk about materials. Another thing that just came out recently is called Zoom Out. So you'll notice here, um, you now have Zoom Out 2x and 1.5x. And what that does is it lets you go from a close-up image out to a bigger image. So it's a way to get like a sequence of frames that, you know, basically zoom out. Let me see if I got a, this was, <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, uh, the Rubicon was a river that, any Roman general would not cross because they knew that if they crossed it, it was like declaring war on Rome. So when somebody crosses the Rubicon, it's like crossing this point of no return. And I was talking about this in a post and I said, Caesar crossing the Rubicon. It came up with some ver versions. I like this one the most, even though the faces, right? That's another weakness that it can have problems with the faces. Like it, for whatever reason, doesn't really do them very well. 
but I started to zoom out of, on this and, you know, your, your eye doesn't really catch the faces. It's really focused on this beautiful image as you zoom out. Um, right. And it starts filling in the blanks. It gave me some riv some rivers that I didn't really like, but then it, this one was pretty good. And I just kept zooming out on it. And it, it's using the generative AI to fill in the blanks. So this was the end point in, right? It threw in this weird, si <laughs> when you don't look at it, it makes sense. Like, when you look at the details, suddenly you start seeing, uh, there's some weird stuff going on here, right? Like, but overall, the gut response and the initial just like looking at it, it looks great. And that zoom out feature uh, has some really interesting possibilities, especially as it gets better. Okay, so let's go with some materials. I think I've showed this previously, but I'm just going to show it again. There's a variety of materials that you can use. And uh, so this is, for example, is an example is a example of a carousel. I did a the background. I did unsplash, technical looking, you know, uh, circuit board with or something like that with blue and gold, and it came up with a nice background. And then I dumped that into Canva and started using it. But here's some examples of materials. Um, brick. So what I did is I said, Persian cat made of brick. And this was one of the images it created. And then, right, same, same thing, bronze, carbon fiber. So it's just making <laughs> like a Persian cat out of these materials and they're stunning, right? It does really good on these um, really intense, fine details. Cotton, fabric, uh, fiber optic, right? Like this, I love these guys. They look so grouchy, um, but they're super cute. Gasoline, glass, gold, right? Um, latex for some reason is really looks great. Uh, stunning, right? Like the detail is just phenomenal. Um, magma, metallic, nickel. I don't know why that was. I thought that would be a little different, but paper, um, plastic, skin, wooden, right? Like it's, these exist no place on earth. It just makes them. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, Paulina. I guess Paulina has left us as well. All right. Uh, question real quick. Anybody? Is that of interest at all? Just should I keep going? Um, yeah, I, but, I like materials very much, especially the, the other cat examples. It, 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 some of them just brilliant. Right? Like, it, <laughs> really um, gorgeous. Like, ivory, ivory. Ivory was another really good one that I had good results with. Uh, let me see. And I think that um, Philip had the question. Was No, was it? Sorry, Gene had the questions of, he was trying to make um, environmental images or graphics fillers. And maybe I can show that in a second. Uh, let me show some other capabilities um, real quick. Fashion, <laughs> like stunning, right? This is all completely original fashion photography. Uh, which looks great. And I'm just going to 
kind of mention there are these these sites that are out there that will kind of give you um, like reference libraries. This is called midlibrary.io. I'll type that into the chat. And this will give you prompts that will help you, you know, modifiers for your prompts so that you could create imagery in a specific way, right? Like if you wanted to do as a Dean Alaya or, you know, whoever, Jean-Paul Gaultier, uh, Pierre Cardin, Jimmy Chu, like you can see each one of these, right, has a different kind of style and you would just use that as a modifier. So, you know, woman in a gorgeous red dress in the style of Jean Galliano or whatever, right? And it's gonna make these crazy different uh, style types like Edward Hardy, holy cow. So let's take a look at this for a second while we're in here. And here's some styles. Right, you want a 3D model, it'll make it a 3D model. You want to do um Ardman. I don't know if you guys um <laughs> Wallace and Gromit, I think, is the uh is where that comes from. But these these will give you ideas of styles, like you know, that you that you can totally uh get by just making these you know, adding in Aberdeen bestiary or whatever, right? So these are all different visual styles. Um, in this particular instance, this is a comic book artist. So you want to create Batman in the style of Neil Adams or uh, who's another great um, Afro samurai. It It's a rabbit hole, so be careful, <laughs> but... It's also an art lesson. Um, Akira, you can definitely mess around with this. Uh, theme, style, subject, technique, etc. And it's, right, it's a hoot. Um, da, 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 let's see. If Brief question. Works. Yeah. So, uh, so Donovan, is this... A library, a library that is attached to Midjourney, or is it some separate business? And does this mean that if if we see a style like Stanko Abadzic here, that the Midjourney all already knows it, and we just have to mention that's it? And yeah. uh, the second question would be: if I would like to add some other style, is it enough to just mention it, or I have to put re references in it somehow? A uh, woman on a staircase in the style of Stenko Abadish. Ab so just by putting that in, it should give us that artist's style. So we're going to expect black and white, kind of these interesting patterns going on, right? Let's see what it comes up with. So the second question was, do you, if you wanted to redo that image, was that right? You would, what would, how would you modify it? Excuse me. My second question was if I can't find the author or I would like to add my own style, if I have it, what do I do? So if you have your own style, um, you'd probably want to use a reference. You might start with a reference image. Um, it hasn't been because these people are all, you know, their work is on the net. It's been had a chance to train extensively on their style, right? So yours is not, and therefore it's going to be um, harder to copy that. And I know that there's some questions about like artists having issues with, you know, things being done in their style. I don't know that that's a problem at the moment though, but you can see like, it looks great. Like, you know, it did it. Like, um, I don't know if I answered your question properly. But if I wanted to do, so let's try uh, 
you just I think just highlight the the name and it will automatically copy. Actually, I like Eve Arnold. Um, so let's do a I'm gonna hit this remix button here, and it pops up a window and it get basically giving me the same prompt. So I'm gonna put in Eve Arnold and we'll see what happens while that sits in the background, right? Um, there, one of my favorite places to look for these, for this inspiration as well on how to use these is, I don't know if you guys use Medium at all. Medium has um, a vast resource of people who are using, <laughs> you know, doing really cool stuff with this, like how to create hidden faces on portraits. So let's take a look at that because that sounds interesting, right? You might want to get this hidden face in there and extensive tutorial on how to do that, right? And what that, I guess it's called paradelia. Um, there's the step-by-step -step guide. You'll find tons of these um, throughout mid Medium. I highly recommend checking out Medium. Hey, Donovan. Yeah. Have you seen um, images here where it's a um, a play of words? Like uh, it, it can make it uh, uh, letters artistic looking. Okay, so let's talk about that because it's really weird how the system works, right? Um, when the, the AI was trained on the image, it looked at pixel by pixel and stuff like that, okay? It did not, it does not understand language at all, period. Like it's a totally different way of um, approaching the world. And as a result, getting something to show up like with the proper words, it's not something it can do right now. I really hope that it does because when once it does, that's going to get crazy, right? Because then you could do the, the logo design a lot easier. Um, you could do, you know, put a, a message on a marquee very easily. I, I was watching this guy do a tutorial on how he managed to get the letters, the right letters to show up on a marquee. Super time intensive, like constantly like rolling. He was using in painting to, he'd type in like the letter I and maybe it would get the letter I, maybe it wouldn't like, and he had to go through individually like selecting regions, trying to get the letters to show up in the right spacing, that's going to change pretty quickly. Um, it's it's not there yet, but um, yeah. Anyways, cool. Thanks. Yeah, like, and you know the other thing is there's okay. Here we go. I love this. Asking you shall receive, right? Uh ideogram maybe that's the one to use because it looks like it's doing good with text generation let's take a look at this huh so it's actually getting the text in there um you know you can see uh let's see da, 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 da. Uh, yeah it's doing a pretty solid job so this is a super fast evolving right technology um you're gonna probably want to use different models for certain things check out ideogram if you want to you know well cool. um Thanks. do super cool logos i think that's good that's like a huge um really important use case that a lot of people are gonna are interested in um and don't get lost in the rabbit hole because there's so much you know, this is like scrolling through Pinterest or something. It's just nonstop novelty and gorgeous, amazing photography. But it's a and it's a great way to learn about art. But it can definitely um, sidetrack you. Okay, 
Uh, da, 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 I kind of talked about this. Do I need to talk about how to do backgrounds again? Or right. Once again, think of it like um, just put the word unsplash in. So techno background, blue and gold lights, unsplash, and it'll do a pretty good job for getting you a texture. Uh, I could talk about consistency of models. I'm just going to say the place that I would go to find this is medium because there's people who have done um, some really great tutorials on that, like uh, Mid Journey, Character Consistency. So um, let's see if we find a good one, right? Creating a consistent story character in Mid Journey and here it is, right? You want this kid to show up in these different images. How do you do it? Well, there's the, there's the, <laughs> there it is. There's your tutorial, right? But like, look at this, you know, in terms of how you're comboing this character with these clothes to get a combo image, for example, right? Um, it's it's doable. It's a little bit geeky at the moment, but it's it's possible. Um, and yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Unless you got questions. Once again, let's see. Not the images are currently not copyrightable. Adobe is going to fight for that. A lot of people, I think, are going to really fight for that. Uh, but it's definitely giving all stock photography companies a run for its money. And Gene, did you... You were talking about... You were working for an environmental agency. Did you have a specific use at the... Or last year, did you have a specific use case of how you wanted to... Of maybe an image that you might want to see? Yeah, well, during the uh, that July heat wave, I wanted to show how workers who are working outside were suffering. Okay, how about workers in the field on a hot day? Um, day the heat. What was that? In a heat wave. Okay. I th I'm going to guess that if we do in a heat wave, it won't, it'll... <laughs> it's going to make something really trippy. Yeah, so, I... you know, one of the key, one of the key features slash bugs of generative AI is it hallucinates. That's how it is creating all this new stuff. It basically says, what are the probabilities of, you know, this being the right answer. And then if it gets that wrong, well, it gets it wrong and it gets really weird, but let's take a look. Maybe it understood heat wave. Now I just want to say there are ways to make each one of these words more, um, more weighted, right? So you can, there's ways to weight like worker or heat or whatever, but, you know, hey, that's kind of not too bad. For some reason, it's got like the smoke here. Um, it has, you know, it would give you the impression, right, of, of what's going on. It does look a little slightly odd, but a lot of people aren't going to notice because they're not going to pay attention. And if you don't like that image, you just hit the remix button and it'll give you another one. Now, we're not going to have time to get into it today, but there's ways that you can generate like, you know, 50 different options really quickly. And I don't have that prompt with me right now, but it'll, it'll really quickly um, make like a whole bunch of options for you. 
you know, because it is a little bit like it's like Pinterest meets Vegas, right? You got the Vegas image slot machine and sometimes, you know, you want to, you're going to have to generate a bunch of images to get the, the one that you like and the one that you can, you know, then keep going a little bit further into. So what would you like to see besides this? Is that close to what you were thinking? No, not really. The I think I think you have to because our company was building robots to away from fabulous, you know, plants. So it, it's it's a completely different environment. The uh, and the people, of course, doing our work weren't suffering because they're they're in clean rooms. But the uh, I wanted to show just graphically what California was going through during the heat wave. Okay. And south south part of the United States. Okay, so um let me see if I can while that's generating in the background, let me see if I could get you at least headed in the right direction. Um Donovan, is it helpful? And I know we'll see as this image comes up, but to give it more um, descriptor words to describe versus uh, less. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm kind of in the habit of just, I want to see what it does. Right. And so I kind of sometimes don't put in enough of that, that kind of extra um, kind of description. And by the way, when you go to mid journey, and you sign up, you get this community feed. And this is all the kind of stuff that other people are doing. And you can notice that it does show you the prompt that was used to get that. So here it says ASCII art cyberpunk teen rebel girl, right? So in the course of scrolling down through here, an old painting with common yellow baboon and ruffles and medieval clothes with the ancient folio with the paws. So that'll give you ideas for what you can copy and paste in it as prompts, right? Like um, for your own stuff. And you can just, yeah, Halloween illustration of a spooky sorceress, a delicate sketch of a white horse and a profile view with a flowing, proud, courageous, powerful mane, um, so sometimes those details help. Sometimes they're a little bit confusing. Let me, but let me show you this real quick. Mid journey documentation. Or I should have clicked command list. Maybe let me do command list. You definitely want to read the documentation. Okay. Um, so this will tell you how to use it, right? It will... Mm, the commands that you can use in Discord. So we can talk about this in the future, but aspect ratios, how much chaos you want to have. Chaos is kind of gives it's a variety of images, um, things you don't want it to have. So by putting the dash dash no, like let's see, no fruit, still life gouache painting, no fruit, because in this one it has fruit. So you can, you can start using these modifiers, right, to get better quality. So this is a low quality, this is a super high quality. Do you want it to um, stylize? Let's see. I'm trying to find some of the photo prompts because they're really, um, really interesting. Oh, yeah. Here's the permutation prompts. So when you do this, let me blow this up. See how you go. Imagine and prompt. So you always start your, your prompts with slash imagine and then you know, the prompt is a red, green, yellow bird. So when you put it in those little things, it's treating it like three separate prompts. And 
it will just boom, crank them all out all at once. All right. Lots to cover, short time. Um, if you want, drop your email in the chat. We can stay in touch. I don't, well, I guess I should bring this up. Um, if you want to give any feedback, there's the feedback form. I'm, you know, always looking for how, how to make this more useful for folks. Uh, appreciate thumbs up on the meeting and then LinkedIn, you know, please look me up and let's stay in touch. Okay. So can I wrap up any other questions? Thanks for stealing. Yeah, just really quick. Um, I, I stepped out. I came back. I I don't know if I missed it. Um, you show a, a way that you in the Discord you can um get, generate images. Look like some kind of API that you call. Have Have you gone over that tutorial or that that not a part of this uh, today? Um, I did go over that and uh, um a little bit, and I'll I'll be happy to kind of get into that a little bit more if you guys want. Want to maybe yeah, a little bit of help, um, in inviting the Mid Journey bot to your Discord server. Mm -hmm. So, it's pretty easy, but, um, yeah, that'll be. Uh, and I'm wondering, I might post this. Maybe I should post this um, on YouTube. This meeting on YouTube, but by the way, um, Gene. I made some prompt modifications, right? And this is what it did, right? So maybe you said something about manufacturing or whatever. By the way, see how everybody's face is turned away? You can't see their faces. So that would be a perfect, um, this is an interesting use of in painting. So I'm going to just see if I can quick knock this out real quick for you. I'm going to upscale this. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm just going to select this whole region. And I I learned about this. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, workers with intense eyes. When you call out the eyes, it forces it to make the eyes, which means it's going to turn the, the construction workers around. So I'm going to say construction workers with intense eyes um, looking at camera. I don't know. And let's see what how, see if it can do it. Um, once again, you know, a little bit geeky, but hey, let's see what happens. Um, was that, who is that? Was that Philip? Or who was that, Philip, who said that? Okay. No, someone else. I didn't. Oh, sorry. I can't see who it was. Gene, I guess. Gene? Gene is uh, somebody else. Um, Let's see what it does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, need a little bit more tweaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it did turn, you know, it turned around and gave you a face, right? Um. The point is, by calling out eyes when you do the in painting, you can <laughs> you can get people to turn around. There's there's tweaks for that. We can talk about that at a later date. Um, and I don't know. I guess that's that's where I'm gonna end our little tutorial today. Uh, maybe we can keep, talk about logos or something next time because I think logos is a big. It'll do amazing logos, but how do you get it to use the right letters? That's the trick. So maybe we can talk about some other tools later next time. Okay. Thank you so much, Donna. I would yes. suggest also touching on the thumbnails, especially uh, as you uh, described, you have done them already. This is a very hot topic because yeah. many of us want to do YouTube videos and the thumbnails is it. Okay, no, that's a big deal. That's great. Yeah, YouTube videos. I love content creation. Um, and I've been we can do that next time. 
I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Donovan. Thanks, Thanks Sarah. Very uh, useful. Facili. All right. Everybody, thank you so much. And we'll catch you next week, hopefully, or something. <laughs> okay. Ciao. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.